Hello, chemistry students. The final section of this chapter, section 4.3, is distinguishing among atoms. So we're going to learn about isotopes, what an isotope is, um, and we're going to um, talk about how isotopes of the same element are different than each other and how they are the same. So first, just a quick little review. I know we talked about this uh, in the last chapter, but sort of what information do you get from the periodic table? Um, for example, we know, you know, this right here, this is our atomic number. This atomic number is always the number of protons. When we, when we look at um, the number down here, this is our mass number. This is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. We, first, we round this to the nearest whole number. So we don't always round up. We don't always round down. You round to the nearest whole number, um, which in the case carbon would be 12. So just, again, really quick, we know that carbon has 12 protons because that's what the atomic number is. So if the mass is, is or I'm sorry, six protons, if the mass is 12 and six of those are protons, the other six must be, whoops, it must be neutrons then. One thing I really didn't mention in the last chapter, because atoms are incredibly small, we don't really talk about the atomic mass or weight in terms of grams or ounces or anything like that. We use something called the atomic mass unit. So atomic mass units, um, are just really tiny um, units of mass. It a actually technically was developed by um, taking the mass of a carbon-12, which is this carbon right here, and dividing it by 12 and saying, because at that time they knew there were six protons and six neutrons in a carbon. Um, and, and so by definition, one atomic mass unit is one twelfth of a carbon-12 atom. And then we also, in the last chapter, talked about the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons in, the, in a neutral atom. So in this section, we're going to talk about what isotopes are um, and how isotopes are different from each other and also how they're the same. Um, isotopes of the same element, um, what similarities they have as well. So an isotope is an atom with the same number of protons but differing numbers of neutrons. And in the case of carbon, we know that carbon always has six positive charges. But there's actually different forms of carbon. There's different isotopes of carbon. So carbon-13 is a carbon with an atomic mass of 13. Uh, there's a carbon-12, which um, has an atomic mass of 12. There's also a carbon-14. So carbon-12, we said, has six protons, because all the carbons do, and then if it has an atomic mass of 12, then the other six mass numbers must be neutrons. Carbon-13 actually has, again, six protons, because it's carbon, but if it has an atomic mass of 13, it must have seven, sorry, it's really hard to write this time with seven neutrons. Um, so it's still carbon, but it has some slightly different properties. Well, we can actually calculate the average atomic mass of all the known isotopes of an element, but some isotopes are really rare, so when we calculate the average, what we do is we calculate a weighted average. So I'm going to explain what this means on the bottom here. And as it turns out, the atomic mass on the periodic table is actually a weighted average of all of the existing isotopes of a particular element. So for example, chlorine, there's a couple of different versions of chlorine. Um, chlorine uh, 35, isotope with a mass of 35, and there's chlorine 37. So technically the mass isn't 35, it's 34.969 and used. And chlorine 37 is 36.966. So those are the those are the two um, known isotopes and the atomic mass. 
But if you took a random sample of chlorine um, from our planet, 75.77% um, of the time, it's going to be this chlorine. Okay, so 77 or 75.77% of the time on Earth, it's going to be chlorine 35 while 24.23% of the time it's going to be chlorine 37 with this atomic mass. So if I want to find an average mass of all the chlorine on our planet, I can't just add these two up and divide by two because that's not a very accurate picture when 75.77% of the time it's this isotope. So I have to do a weighted average. It's, it's, um, it's sort of like in a lot of your classes, maybe 50% of your grade is your test. So you maybe have 15 homework assignments that all contribute, contribute to your homework grade. Um, and maybe you only, whoops, and maybe you only have a couple of tests. But, but the tests still make up 50% of your grade because they're, it's weighted to be 50% of your grade. So it's, it's kind of like that. So the way we calculate that average atomic mass is we just write out um, chlorine 35. I write the atomic mass and I multiply it by the percent abundance or the percent of the time that it occurs. But I move that percent into a number format, <clears throat> excuse me, which, which means, which means, um, making it into a decimal. Okay, so instead of 75.77%, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. 75.77%, it becomes 0.7577. And chlorine 37 becomes 0.2423% um, of the time. So here's how we calculate this. We take... 34.969 times 0.7577, and we actually get 26.469. Then for the chlorine 37, we take the atomic mass, 36.966, multiply it by the 0.2423, and we get 8.957. And then if we simply add those up. I'm going to try not to mess anything up. There we go. We actually get the atomic mass of 35.45. So if you look on the periodic table, the mass of chlorine, which is 35.45, is actually an average atomic mass of both of the occurring isotopes of chlorine. Um, so that's how we get that you know, it's not an exact number because it's actually that average. And chlorine is one of them that falls kind of right in between, um, between 35 and 36. Uh, so that's where that number actually comes from. All right. So if we look at the different, there's three different um, naturally. If we look at oxygen, there are actually three naturally occurring isotopes of oxygen. And we know, since they're oxygen, the number of protons is 8. Oh, that's a terrible 8. It's hard to write with this. And this one is 8. And this one is 8. Again, it's oxygen, so all oxygen has 8 protons. We also know the number of protons, which are the positive charges, should be equal to the number of electrons, which are the negative charges. So again, this is also 8, 8, and 8. Here's where things differ, and we talked about this a little on the last slide. Oxygen-16 has 8 protons. The remaining ma mass of, of um, 8 must be the neutrons, right? 8 plus 8 equals 16. Oxygen 17 is going to have 9. 9 plus 8 is 17. 
oxygen 18 is actually going to have 10 neutrons. So you can see the only difference is the number of neutrons. So let's calculate average atomic mass. So for the average atomic mass of the three oxygen isotopes, the way we need to calculate that is um, we take the atomic mass in atomic mass units and the percent, and we're actually going to multiply these across. So I multiply the top row, then I'm going to multiply the middle row, and then I'm going to multiply the bottom row. Um, I do, I also have to move the decimal point because I'm going to convert these out of percent, right? So I have to move that two decimal places over for each of these. And then I'm just going to multiply them across. So if I multiply this first row across, I get 15.961. If I multiply the second row across, I get 0 0.0634. And then when I, once I have all three of those, I'm just going to add them all up. And I'm going to be honest, I have a title somewhere, and I am not sure where. And one of, one of these three numbers is slightly off, because I get 16.061 when I add these up. And it should be closer to this 15.995, uh, but it should be a little bit higher. Um, but this is a little bit too high, and I only know that because when I look at the periodic table, it's 15.9995, um, so I do have a little um, Mrs. AMUs. But again, what I want you to know is just this is the procedure, this is the way you do it. Um, and common sense, right, if 99.762% of all the naturally occurring oxygen is oxygen 16 with this atomic mass number, obviously this number should be closest to this and not and, and not um, as close to, to these two. And this number really does reflect that. Again, I have a slight small error somewhere and I'm not really sure um, where it is. And that is how you calculate the average atomic mass.